Hey guys, Noah here. Welcome back to my channel. But if you are new here, then hello, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you guys how I make my propagation boxes. I do this a lot because I have an Etsy plant shop and I like to sell my plants and share them with you guys. Also, I like just having multiple of every single plant. So I definitely have so many of all these plants, but I'm just gonna share with you guys like my tips and tricks since I've been doing this for a while now and I have a pretty decent success rate. So I definitely wanna share with you guys my propagation box. First thing you'll need propagation box so I get these on Amazon I will link the exact one I got down below I really like them because it's super easy to open and close it's a perfect size for me like depth like um, height wise and they're stackable so I have a bunch of them stacked up by my window and yeah I just like these um, some people do suggest putting holes in them but I don't do that I will explain to you guys later what I do instead um, but yeah just nice empty plastic bin I do want to also mention that you don't have to spend any money and even buy propagation boxes you can use these like to-go containers from restaurants I get this from the restaurant I work at and it works great all you need to do is put sphagnum and put the plants on top and then close it so it gets humid um, humid in there you don't even have to use these you can use a lot of people use like you know those uh containers that your salad comes in like they're like little plastic containers you could use that you can use literally anything that has a lid and is sealed and enclosed just to provide humidity for your plant so i just want to throw that out there you don't have to spend any money and like go out and buy boxes this is just if you want to but you can do anything enclosed for humidity but next thing you'll need uh plastic cups i buy these at dollar tree so you get 28 cups for a dollar i think everything's a dollar 25 now at dollar tree um, but the reason i like these is because they are clear so when the plant's growing you can really see the roots come out from the sides and i really like that it's a very thin plastic so it's very easy to cut holes at the bottom in order to like water the plant um, so i'll show you guys how i do that but third thing you need is something sharp to cut holes on the bottom of the cups with fourth thing you'll need is a plant cutting and then the fifth thing you'll need and the most important is sphagnum moss I buy this on Amazon and I will leave the link down below the exact one that I use. I've used quite a few different brands of sphagnum and I definitely think this one is the best. Like I've had the most success rate with it and less rotting. I did have a very big problem with rotting. So I definitely recommend this sphagnum moss specifically that I will show you guys. But before we get started, let's go around and just chop some of my plants so I can share with you guys exactly how it works. All right, so I got my scissors. I'm trying to figure out what exactly I want to to chop and prop from over here. I have this like really large uh, Monstera that's doing really well and I could definitely cut it right here but I think I don't want to yet. Let's see. Yeah, not yet. I'm gonna wait till it grows longer. I have a long Hartley Philodendron which I already have a bunch of this propagating so I don't necessarily need more. Um, I already got a cutting of my elbow, Trabuai. I could take a Burl Marks cutting. If I see anywhere that could be cut easily. This is a hard one to chop. Yeah, I'm gonna wait on that. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm gonna cut some of this. Yeah, look at these huge leaves, it's gorgeous. I'm gonna cut this right here. This is a Scandapsis Exotica. Let's start a pile. Could definitely take this cutting. I'm gonna cut it all the way down here. Some of these. What else? I could definitely take some skin dabs as cuttings. And I will take one of these. This should be good enough. So now that we got our plant cuttings, let's go ahead and make some cups for the propagation box. All right, so here's the box. I'm going to use 
a bunch of these cups and they're gonna be basically lined up in here. But before we do that, we do have to cut holes at the bottom. I like to use an X-Acto knife. You can definitely use whatever you have. I literally just do one hole. So I cut it at the bottom, twist it around to make a hole about that size. It doesn't have to be big, this works. I've always done it. And now we have three cups. Let me roll up my sleeves here. What I like to do is put, fill the cups up with sphagnum first. A cool thing about these plastic cups is you can also write on them with Sharpie. So if you wanted to label it, say if you have a node with no leaf and you don't wanna forget what plant it is, you can definitely label it. I don't do that anymore just because I find that you can't really reuse it, reuse the cup for a different plant. So I don't do that anymore. All right, so I like to fill up my cup pretty full with sphagnum just so it gives the plant I can leave it in here longer when once the roots grow down it'll have plenty of space if you do like just that the roots will reach the bottom pretty quickly and you got to check on it often and I don't really have time for that I like to forget about these kind of so I like to fill it up all the way so I have my sphagnum pretty moist already so I don't need to water it now but I will show you at the end how I do water them I'm going to put in this Hindu rope cutting in. I took the cutting from here, so I'm gonna wrap the bottom with sphagnum. So what I do is I take a little bit of sphagnum, I kind of wrap the node, like make sure the node is covered, and then I stick it in the cup. So it ends up looking like this. And then if you want, and I probably will with this one because it's a Hoya, roots can come out of anywhere from the stem. I will just put more sphagnum around the stem just to promote more growth. And that's it for that one. Um, I did take a few neon heart leaf philodendrons, so I'm gonna separate them by each node. So if you guys don't know, each node is like this part where the roots will grow out of, this little dark, pointy parts. So I'm gonna cut and separate here, 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 and here for each node. And then I sometimes give them each their own cup, but for this one I'm not, so I could just put them all together because when I do pot them up, I'm gonna pot them all up together. And then I'm, I'll leave one long one just so I'll have like a vine on the potted up plant, if that makes sense. And then I'm just gonna stick them in this a cup with sphagnum all together. Just make sure the nodes are underneath the sphagnum moss. And that's it for this one. They're all really simple. I love sphagnum. All right, so that's that. Um, next up, I'm going to do this begonia sinbad. I took a pretty large cutting. So leaves can actually grow out of the stem anywhere. So what I'm gonna do is cut it right here, right below where all the leaves are. And then I'm just gonna stick this into sphagnum and this will hopefully grow and give me some roots and new leaves. So I will do two, I will do one just like this. Wrap it up, good. I'm gonna add some more sphagnum. So that's gonna be one. And then let's make another cup. I do have to cut holes again. I'm actually running pretty low on sphagnum, so I need to order some soon. Sometimes people always ask me is like, how wet is the sphagnum? But mine's not that wet. If you could see when you squeeze it, a little bit of water comes out, but not much. And that's how wet I like it to be. I don't want it to be any wetter than that because then they'll rot more easily. All right, so now I'm just gonna make sure that um, this is submerged and leave the leaves out. And this will be a nice tall plant once it roots. Add some more. There we go. Next up, I will do the Skindapsis exotica. Just gotta make sure that these nodes are submerged. Very simple. Stick it under there, and I will add some more spag. So there's the exotica. And let me angle it down so I can close this box when I need to. There we go. And then we have a bunch of Skindapsis pictus cuttings. So filled up a cup of moss and then I'm just gonna stick this in. I'll make this two propagations. So one here, there'll be longer vines. That'll be fun to have. And then where did I cut this one? There we go. 
I actually don't usually propagate the pictus and sphagnum. I usually do water, so this will be a fun experiment to see if it does better in sphagnum or not. All right, so that's how this propagation is, box is gonna look. Obviously, I have space for more, but I'm not gonna do everything right now. You basically just seal the lid up and leave it in a bright spot. So you could put it underneath the grow light or you could put it in front of your window. I like to put it in front of my window like this. And so since we do not have holes at the top of it, I open it up once every two to three days and I will let it breathe for at least an hour, if not longer. So I definitely recommend doing that. Otherwise you will probably find rot in some of your plants and it's just not gonna be fun to have one die. So I definitely recommend opening it up at probably every other day is best. Don't leave it in here for longer than three days without opening it up. And then I will, when I open it up, check the sphagnum and feel that it's still moist. If it is dry or if it's not getting humid enough in here, like if you don't see condensation on the box like mine have, then I would definitely recommend adding water to the bottom. And literally all you do is pour water at the bottom of the bin just like that. And the holes at the bottom of the cups are going to soak up that moisture in order to water the sphagnum or if they already are wet then it'll just promote humidity so that's literally it that's all i do for these propagation boxes so you guys made a propagation box with me today i really hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you found it helpful if you do have any questions definitely leave them in the comments down below and i can definitely answer them for you guys i can also do an update video on this specific box if you guys would like to see it definitely let me know in the comments down below as well don't forget to follow me on instagram because i post updates on there pretty often as well and with that all being said i'll see you guys in my next video thanks so much for watching see you guys later bye